St. Augustine of Hippo writes in his sermon on the nativity of our Lord, truth has arisen from the earth and justice looked down, has looked down from heaven. Awake mankind for your sake, God has become man. Awake you who sleep, rise up from the dead and Christ will enlighten you. I tell you again for your sake, God has become man. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Paul Gerhardt, that great hymnist, as you know, my favorite hymnist, writes in these words, words that I can never really get off of my mind. They're, they're always there, no matter what time of year, because it's, it's so true throughout Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, Lent, Easter, and so on. Throughout the entire church year, these words ring true. Love caused your incarnation. Love brought you down to me. Your thirst for my salvation procured my liberty. A love beyond all telling that led you to embrace. In love, all loves excelling our lost and fallen race. One of the reasons that I love this so much is because I don't think that we tr quite get what love is. At least not until we look at Christ. We don't actually understand love. We can tell one another that we, that we love one another and perhaps that's true, I'm sure that it is. But there's always different kinds of love, people say. I don't believe that's true either. In Greek, there are three words for love. But there's one meaning. Sacrifice. We can call agape, phileo, and eros three different types of love because they're three different Greek words. One means the love of God, one means the love of man, and one means the love between a husband and a wife. And I think, wait a second, all of those are the love of God. All of those are the love of Jesus Christ. Did God not love us enough that He became man? Agape? God's love for us? Did He not love us enough that He entered into the womb of Mary? Was it not love that caused His incarnation? That brought Him down to us? For His brother, did He not thirst for His salvation? That he procured the freedom of his brother from sin. And then the love, Eros. The love beyond all telling that led us to embrace. In love, all love excelling. The love of the lost and the fallen race. In those words we understand God's modus operandi, or as cops call it, MO. What motivates God? What motivates God to do anything? What motivates God to hear our prayers? What motivates God to act upon our prayers? What motivation does God have at all to save us? What motivated God to create us? What's the motive? behind God being God at all. Oh Lord, how shall we meet you? The unfathomable, the incomprehensible, the almighty, all magnificent. How could we even begin to understand something like that? Let alone receive him. And God, 
gave us the answer. And much like little James Andrew, God Almighty in the hands of a mother. And you can see there the love that God would not, that would spare no expense to save you from your sins. Would spare no expense. And He did not come in a flash and a bang. The Almighty God who created all things. The One who makes us ask, how shall we meet the mighty Lord of all? How shall we meet the God who created the heavens and the earth? And separated the land and the sea. How can we greet such a God? And God answers by putting an infant in a feeding trough. That's something we can accept. That's something that we can understand. A baby. Vulnerable to the world. We can understand that God. But then that baby would grow and he would show us the errors of our ways. Even his cousin, John the Baptist, would call us a brood of vipers. Who told you to flee from the wrath to come? You should be afraid of God because of your sins. Well, which God? Well, I'll tell you, he's coming. I am not worthy to touch the thong of his sandals, but he is coming. And when He comes, does He come in a loud, booming uh, God in presence? He comes as Christ. True God and true man to make all waters clear and clean for baptisms for all. And John says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And I don't know what the people's reaction was, but I imagine that there was some silence. And some, did he say what I think he just said? Because in that lowly person, Jesus the Christ, he would show us that repentance is the true posture that the Christian is to take. Humbleness is the posture that we should take with our brothers and sisters and especially with, with God. Luther says in his first of his 95 theses that repentance, repentance is what we must have. We must be in a constant state of repentance. Because, see, we are not in Eden. We are east of her. And when we approach our Lord, we approach Him in such a way that we should be fearful. And yet, when we see Christ in His Word and in the font and in the altar, we, we should be fearful of God Himself, but He gives Himself to us in such ways that we're not fearful in the sense that we'll be destroyed, but fearful in the sense of how wonderful God is, that He would give us Himself in such simple means. Water and Word, bread, wine and Word, a sinful pastor to preach His Word. O oh Lord, how shall we meet You and welcome You aright? You did this morning. You confessed Your sins. You were forgiven of Your sins. So yes, love calls Christ's incarnation and love brought Him down to us. And He thirsted for our salvation. He thirsted for our salvation so much that our heads would be plentiful with water. And that we would not hunger nor thirst, but be giving, given the food of eternal life and the washing 
that we shall never grow dirt upon our souls again. That's our God. That's our God in human flesh. All love is the same if it's modeled after Christ's love. And that is sacrificial. Agape, phileo, and eros all begin in the feeding trough and end at the feeding altar and finally at the Lamb's high feast. We are so cared for and we don't even realize it. We are so loved and we turn a blind eye. I'm here to tell you today joy is coming and He is coming soon. Repent and be forgiven. Arise anew tomorrow and remember that Christ is coming, that glorious Son who sends forth His beams so cheering. And for each and every one of us, He shall guide us safely home. Amen.